welcome to the love bug show which comes to you every sunday from 9 30 to 10 p.m i'm your host marcy Curie. well today we have two gentlemen mr peter karanja who has written a book millions of people missing and we have mr john n nganga who has written a book a leader's work ethics karibuni sana asante we've been discussing about culture and christianity and today we want to talk about where does where where does the soul of a person go after death based on second samuel 12 15 to 23 kindly mr john nganga can you explain to us what was the belief system behind david's son's death i want to read for for us so that we get the story fresh second samuel chapter 12 I'm reading from verse 15. After Nathan had gone home, the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife had born to David, and he became ill. David pleaded with God for the child. He fasted and spent the night lying in sackcloth on the ground. The elders of his house household stood beside him to get him up from the ground, but he refused, and he would not eat any food with them. On the seventh day, the child died. David's attendants were afraid to tell him what the, that the child was dead, for they thought, while the child was still a living, he would listen to us. He wouldn't listen to us when we spoke to him. How can we now tell him the child is dead? He may do something desperate. Verse 19. David noticed that his attendants were whispering among themselves, and he realized the child was dead. Is the child dead? He asked. Yes, they replied, he is dead. Then David got up from the ground, and after he had washed, put on lotions, and changed his clothes, he went into the house of the Lord and worshipped. Then he went to his own house, and at his request, they served him food, and he ate. He said and asked him, Why are you acting this way? While the child was alive, you fasted and wept. But now that the child is dead, you get up and eat. Verse 22, he answered, While the child was still alive, I fasted and wept. I thought, who knows? The Lord may, graciously, uh, may be gracious to me and let the child live. But now that he is dead, why should I go on fasting? Can I bring him back again? I will go to him but will not return to me. This passage of scripture clearly shows the difference between Jewish traditions and David's belief system. The Jews believed that after a person is dead, that's when you should spend your time praying, spend your time mourning, spend your time... But David said, I'm clear about what happens when a soul of man dies. He goes to be with the Lord. We are left this side. And that's the first thing you need that David understood. That basically once the child was dead, the soul has gone to be with the Lord. The body is left there, but the body is, um, is not the child. Number two, which David belief system comes out, comes out from this story, is that David believed that prayer is totally useless. For somebody who is dead. No amount of praying and fasting can change the condition of somebody dead. If he dies a sinner, he goes to hell. If he dies righteous, there's nothing you can do to make him not go to heaven. You need to understand, according to David, there's nothing you could do. When the child was still living, there was hope God could intervene. So he prayed, he fasted. But once the child is dead, the message from God is, I have, I have dealt with it my way. The best thing is for you to accept what God has done. So the second thing that the belief system is, David has is telling him is, this is, uh, this, is, this is now done. There is nothing I can do about it. Thirdly, the way that he is actually behaving is that you need to be grateful to God even if God doesn't decide your way. So he says, I really wanted the child to live, but
But God has decided for the child to die. So let's be fair. God is wiser than me. And God knows why he has decided to take my son. So he accepted the son and started rejoicing and celebrating. Oh, the others were at pains. What's wrong with him? Might he be going mad? He said, no, 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 you don't understand. It's a belief system issue. And like we have said in this program many times, our behavior tells us what we believe. You can say, I believe something, but you are behaving the opposite. Your behavior tells us not what you say you believe, but what you actually believe. And that's really why this passage is such a critical passage, because it discusses with us about the issues of death and what happens to somebody after they are dead. Uh, I can add something to that. Uh, actually, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27 is very explicit. It says, it is appointed for man to die once, but after this, the judgment. In other words, uh, when somebody dies, the soul doesn't linger around. It goes either to heaven or to hell, as uh, Mr. John Nanga said. And if you remember the, the thief at the cross with Jesus, when uh, the thief, one of the thieves, you know, uh, had trusted Jesus and accepted him into his life as Lord and Savior, Jesus told him, you know, when he, when he told him, uh, Master, remember me. And Jesus, what did he say to him? Tonight, today, you'll be with me in paradise. He didn't talk of tomorrow or another day. In other words, uh, as soon as the thief died, he was with Jesus in heaven. Yeah, And, uh, it, uh, it, and even earlier on, uh, later, earlier on, Jesus had also said about heaven and hell, and he said, those people who don't follow the commandments, they will end up in the lake of fire. Maybe so it's I, very explicit. Maybe I can add a verse which has come to my mind. Oh, okay. It's Paul talking about death. Yeah. Yes. And he says to be absent yeah. from the body, yes, yeah. it to be present with the Lord. So this talk about purgatory is not biblical. Because the Bible is not giving any space. As soon as you are dead as a Christian, therefore you have absented yourself or you have been removed out of the body, we are left with your body, you are present with the Lord. And I think that's a very, very important thing for us to understand because death is such a frightening thing, death is such a worrying thing that your belief system is critical. And you need to find out where does your belief system about death come from. If it is from the scriptures, we have quoted both the New Testament and the Old Testament, it will be very clear that as soon as somebody is dead, it's too late to do anything. So I always make fun of people who advertise the death of their loved one in the nation newspaper, and they add there, we pray that the Lord would put him in a good place. A prayer. Now, question. How would you be praying that God would do something about the dead? Karanja has just quoted. It's very clear. It's appointed at men to die once. As soon as they are dead, the next thing is judgment. So you need to understand that Praying that the Lord would be put the soul of your loved one to a good place is a wasted prayer. What is worse, it's not just a wasted prayer. You are paying for it. <laughs> you pay the national newspapers to say something meaningless. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and, um, and the, 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 that's the other one that, um, that, that will be coming out in a, in a short while is Deuteronomy chapter, um, chapter 18, verse 12 to verse, verse 10 to verse 14. Again, still talking about death, the Bible is saying that the people of Canaan were exterminated by God because of many things. One of them was consulting the dead. And God is saying, once somebody has died, you are not allowed to communicate with them in any way. You cannot talk with your, or with your relatives who died. Because the Canaanites were condemned because of dealing with the dead. Once a relative dies, allow them to die. Let the dead be dead and the living be living. No relationship is allowed by the scriptures. And I've quoted for you Deuteronomy. Yes. No relationship is allowed between you, and the, between you and the dead. And so you ask yourself, 
you see people writing oh, writing uh, 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 about somebody who died 10 years ago and they write there oh you used to we, we loved you you went to be with us we are thinking about you now how can you address a letter then pay the newspaper for it addressing somebody dead when the scriptures are clear there is no relationship between the living and the dead again I say it is foolish to be writing a letter to a dead person what is worse is you are paying for it now I think it's important to understand our customs and understand. And I'm not talking, not talking about old customs I'm talking about customs done now that are going on that clearly indicate that although we may be claiming to be Christians obviously our behavior is not the break okay well, keep your comments coming or your suggestion on uh, Champions TV Facebook page on Twitter Champions TV at Instagram Champions TV we are Mr. Peter Karan what are some of the unbiblical sacrifices or rites performed from the dead can you briefly explain that to us there are, there are many mm -hmm. uh, just as Mr. Nganga has said yeah. uh, very often when somebody dies we hold prayers actually a prayer service mm -hmm. for the dead person mm -hmm. and the fact of the matter is those prayers do not help the soul of the dead person. Because as you said, it, mm -hmm. it's either in hell or in heaven. Yeah. So those prayers are a waste of time. Mm -hmm. yeah? And uh, another thing that is common is that uh, there are some tribes in Kenya who actually sacrifice bulls, goats, and there are many. And uh, what they do is that they think when they sacrifice, They'll be able to sort of uh, drive away the, the spirit of, de of the dead because they think if they don't do that they will not appease the spirit of the dead because they think the dead spirit hangs around, hovers around and might bring harm to them and therefore they, they end up wasting money you know buying bulls you know and making all sorts of sacrifices like there is one tradition for example in Luoland mm -hmm. called Teroburu which uh, you probably have heard about it. And essentially what it is that uh, they, after the death of the person, mm -hmm. they have a, they chase after a herd of cows, you know, beating drums and making a lot of noise and thinking that they're driving away the evil spirits so that the dead, uh, you know, the dead do not harm them. And uh, the fact of the matter is that is a waste of time. They waste their, their voices, they waste the bulls and uh, it is unbiblical because as uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 20, 22 says, the sacrifices that the pagans or Gentiles sacrifice, they make them to demons, not to God. So in other words, when you are sacrificing, making blood sacrifices, what you are actually doing in the process of thinking, you are appeasing the dead, you are actually sacrificing to demons. Yeah? yeah, and that is forbidden in the Bible. It is sacrilege. It is actual idolatry, and that is one of the things that one of the reasons why God drove away the Canaanites from their land and gave it to the Jews. So, Maybe I can add a few things to what he has said. Okay, is that okay? It's okay. Go ahead. Yeah, so we are looking at customs and traditions that we are carrying on, but they are not biblically based. Mm -hmm. For example, when your relative dies, mourning is biblical. Because you have lost a loved one, mm -hmm. it is in, it's okay to mourn. If you cry, go ahead and cry. That is okay. And the scriptures are clear about that. So there is nothing wrong with mourning. And, it, and that can go on. Mm -hmm. But then you need to understand that the whole process of funeral must be seen in its proper light. It is a funeral service, mm -hmm. the funeral meetings are all remembering the dead and thanking God for the person who died. In other words, they are not addressed to the dead. They are addressed to God. To tell God, we are sorry that we we, we have lost so and so. But I want you to know we are grateful for the 10 years or the 20 years or the 100 years you gave us. We should be spending our funeral meetings not talking to the dead, 
but talking to God about the life of the dead and drawing lessons out of it. My encouragement is every evening, choose a few people who can say why are they grateful to God for the life of the person who is dead. And even if the guy was a thief, there is something good he did. It's good to spend time in the funeral actually remembering the dead and thanking God for it. So the funeral service, the funeral meetings must be times of remembrance when you are remembering how God used the person in one way or the other to be a blessing to you. So we, the, the thing that we want to, to remove is the activity of the funeral that has addressing themselves to the dead. Number two, it's important to understand that you are not talking to the dead, you are talking to the living. So whereas the funeral meeting is one, it's a time of remembrance and that's giving. The other thing is, it's a time of encouraging the, the ones who have lost their loved one. And in doing so, you point them to God. So you should be spending the time in the funeral encouraging the living. Remember the dead cannot benefit from anything you see yeah. or anything you do. Yeah. So it means then that all the meetings should be addressing themselves to you have lost your loved one, but be encouraged. Why? This is the blessing it was to me. Why? This is what the Bible says about the dead. Why? He is the, he is, he, God is the, is the husband of the widows and the father of the fatherless. He will be with you. Give words of encouragement. The Bible has them that can help you. So instead of addressing yourself to the dead, it will be important. But thirdly, which is, which is, which is important, is that you need to understand that when you are taking the body for burial, you are not burying the person. A Christian is not variable, if that is English. You cannot bury me. I'm not variable. Why? I repeat what I said earlier. To be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. What does that mean? That as soon as I'm dead, I'm not there. Yeah. It is very interesting. You find somebody died two weeks ago, you are doing a funeral today, and you talk like you are talking to him. He is not in the, in the body. He is way with the Lord. In the presence of the Lord. So if you truly are a biblical Christian, how can you be addressing the coffin like it is containing your late loved one? It has nothing. Now the other one they say is, we are showing our last respects to the dead. You can't show it. From the instructions we are given, you are not supposed, the dead and the living have no relationship. That's why in <laughs> Jesus giving an example about the dead, he said the, the, the rich man Lazarus, when they are dead, Lazarus says, please send somebody to my, no, rather the dead, the rich man says, I'm in so much pain, send somebody to my brothers. And they no, 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 no. You have no relationship with them. They will listen to Moses and the prophets. What that tells you then is that you need to understand as you are dealing, as you are dealing with, the, with the dead, the dead are gone, so you cannot in the, in the, in, as escort him. So we are, oh, we are burying the, we are, we are, we are burying so and so. That's the not a biblical language. We are burying the remains of so and so. We are escorting. You are not escorting me. You are escorting my body. Yeah. I needs to be understood. So the language we use during funerals make people actually start thinking there is something in the body. That's why they they will put a, a very expensive suit on someone, a suit. The sons never bought the father as long as he was alive. But as soon as he is dead, my goodness, they will go to any expense. That buying of expensive suits is a behavior with a belief behind it. And that's a belief that we have to deal with. There is nothing you do to a dead body where the owner benefits at all. So even if you expected him to bless you, he cannot bless you for anything that you do when he is dead. It's what you did when he was living. But the point is, he can't bless you anyway. He is gone. According to Lazarus and, Lazarus and the, the rich man, he is gone. He has no way of affecting the ones who are alive. So you can see then, this idea of the talk during the funeral meetings, the discussion that the coffin, we are burying the coffin. And then, there is a kind of an idea that the grave, the person we have buried is in the grave. He isn't. 
That's why you, after a few years you can cultivate there and grow bananas. Yeah. And it will not affect the, it will not affect the dead person. Mm. Because when the trumpet sounds, some people died in the sea. We never buried them. Yeah. But when the trumpet sounds, if Jesus, if you are a Christian and, the, and Jesus is coming back mm. at the rapture, every bone, everything mm. will be resurrected. So it doesn't matter that you have grown a banana over there. Mm. And we are going to have new bodies. So we'll not require the old ones. Yes. And we shall meet the Lord in the air yeah. forever to be with him. Yeah. So we need to understand that it is good to have a grave, but never start imagining that your relative is inside that grave. Mm -hmm. If he is a Christian, he is with the Lord. Yeah. If he is not a Christian, too bad, but he's still not in the grave. Mm -hmm. So we need to be careful how we walk near, uh, we not walk near a graveyard and we behave like there is something special. Yeah. Just soil. Mm -hmm. In fact, I like the way the priests, the pastors like putting it. They say, let the soil go back. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I think you can see there are many, many, many activities yes. that are not quite biblical. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Master, if you allow, I can add uh, another one. It's okay. Um, it's common in some religions whereby they believe uh, they can pray to the saints. They can ask the saints to pray for them. Dead saints. Mm -hmm. You know, people like St. Peter, yeah. Mary Mother of Jesus, yes. all those people. Mm -hmm. And uh, they pray long prayers, so and so pray for us, so and so pray, pray for us. us yeah. And the fact of the matter is, mm -hmm. uh, those prayers end up no, because they can't hear. They can't hear them. It is better for them to ask Karanja to pray for them for God to intervene. So, so it's not biblical. It is not biblical. Uh -huh. It is what uh, John Ganga talked about, John chapter, I mean, Deuteronomy chapter 18, mm -hmm. trying to communicate with the dead. Yeah. It's not biblical at all. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, I must add that there are people who claim that uh, they have consulted with their, with their loved ones. Eh? Yeah. And uh, what I can add is that, some, you know, sometimes the demons, they masquerade as that person and they give themselves the body of that person so that you think you are talking to them, but you are actually talking to a demon in the form of that person. Because let's face it, demons are spirits and spirits do not have body. But they can give themselves their bodies, just like uh, angels. They can give themselves the bodies of beautiful, beautiful men. Yeah. You know, handsome men. Yeah. So uh, these things they they happen because the demons know there are some people who are expecting them. You know, to com expecting the dead ones to communicate with them. But it is them who actually are talking to them. So they are actually doing idolatry with God is. Another thing that I, I must add is that, you know, we Africans, especially around the urban areas, we think if somebody bar, bar de, dies today and we bury him today or tomorrow, we are not giving respect to the, to the person. And so you find, you know, people waste, you know, uh, many days having funeral meetings, yeah. thinking that the longer you keep somebody, the better respect you are giving him. But I, I must say that it doesn't follow. It's a waste of time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, keep your comments coming on our Facebook fan page, Champions TV, on our Twitter handle at Champions TV. You are watching The Love Bug Show, Christian and Culture. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm.